Elizabeth Guigo, thank you for being on WPC TV. You're the former uh, French Minister of Justice. But I want to ask you about how you see the future of the European Union. You've been on a panel this morning with that. And obviously, there's Brexit, there's a right-wing trend, a populist trend in Central and Eastern Europe. How should the EU progress? Well, first, I think that uh, Brexit can be an opportunity for the European Union. Because it's beginning, we are beginning to see that, of course, it's, it's a bad uh, event for the whole of Europe. But uh, it's a tragedy for the UK. And I hope that one day it will be possible for the UK to come back. Uh, and thanks to Mr. Trump, who said to the Europeans uh, that they should take their own uh, problems, you know, tackle their own problems and, 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 and manage their own destiny, uh, I think that we will be forced uh, to go ahead. And uh, in my view, uh, the, of course, the European Union has to reinforce itself and we, we have to, to uh, really have a complete economic and monetary union and we are on the good way for that. Uh, we need to uh, develop uh, a capacity on defense. Uh, I think the, uh, the consciousness has grown. Uh, but we have to look outside of ourselves, yeah. not to be so uh, Euro-centered. And in my view, the Euro-pessimism, pessimism, the Euro-hostility, comes from the fact that the European Union, which uh, built itself on internal uh, question, peace and prosperity, uh, has failed to uh, tackle the global uh, uh, questions that uh, uh, create anxiety amongst our uh, uh, citizens. And uh, that uh, uh, in the global world, this is no longer possible. So unless we do what we succeeded uh, uh, to do uh, after the uh, World War II, that is, uh, find solutions to the uh, fears and anxieties of our citizens, uh, but today those anxieties crystallize on what do we have a declining Europe? Uh, are we going to uh, control uh, migrations? Uh, are we ready and, and can we fight terrorism? Uh, can we have uh, uh, more cooperation on climate? Those are the essential questions and I don't see how, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, there is a growing consciousness that uh, we have to work uh, together on these questions uh, first with Africa. And of course, it's, it remains important to uh, uh, work on uh, the stability of the continent with Russia, for example. Uh, but we really have to, uh, to be aware that there is n the, the first strategic priority for Europe is now to, to look south, which is Africa, and the Middle, uh, middle and, and Near East. Yes, because it will obviously uh, lessen the problem, the problem of immigration, which of course becomes a populist issue in the European Union. You see in Central in Hungary and Czech Republic, Slovakia, and so on. Yes, I, I see yes, what you but mean. But if we, if we, <laughs> we haven't done anything on that. We have not uh, 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 accomplished the whole Schengen project. I negotiated the Schengen uh, Convention. I know what's inside. <laughs> When we, uh, uh, you know, suppress the uh, internal borders of Europe, we also wrote yeah. that we should strengthen the control of our external borders. But even if we do that, and it's, I think we we are having progress on that. Even if we do that, uh, the, the, we very well know that the medium and long-term solution, the real solution, is on development of. Uh, immigration countries. And where do migrants come? They come from, uh, of course, countries in, uh, in war, like Syria, but, and Iraq, but, uh, and Lib Libya, of course. 
but they come from Africa, where the problems of uh, development in general, not, not only jobs, but health, but education. And so, because Africa is a continent that uh, has a lot of potentialities, I think we have, we, we Europeans, have to uh, make understood uh, that Africa is not only a problem. Those problems we have to tackle in cooperation. But Africa is a chance for Europe. But let me ask you a final question. You said Schengen, of course, Britain was not in the Schengen um, area. Um, Eurozone integration, it's a great ambition and so on. But is the future of the, if you look ahead for the European Union, is it going to be a Europe of um, variable job, of concentric circles, multi speed, etc.? Or can it really be? a one-size-fits-all Europe? No, I think we, we are heading towards a more differentiated Europe. Uh, I'm not talking about circles, because if you say circle, you say some are inside and some outside. I think we've got to do what we did in, in, with the uh, uh, Euro and Schengen, saying a few countries saying, this is what we want to do. We are open to anyone who wants and who can. Uh, do what we want. And so it's, it, it should be an open uh, uh, um, uh, processus. And, uh, but I think, we, of course, we, we will not be able in the future to do everything at the same time. What we have to secure as a, uh, uh, you know, as, as, as a um, uh, unity of Europe is uh, respect of our values respect of uh, the state of law, yeah. uh, separation of, uh, uh, you know, of powers, yeah. which is not the case in Poland, I'm sorry, to, by the government, not by uh, the, the Polish people, for, no. Uh, and uh, we have to respect that. And, uh, and of course, I think that there are, for the whole of the European Union, uh, there are a few policies that can be uh, tackled and be, be conducted uh, with the whole of the Union, uh, certainly energy is one, energy and climate. And Africa. Elizabeth Kigo, thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks to you.